Hey, what's up? It's Humphrey here. So welcome to a direct comparison video of Fidelity versus Vanguard. Now, I feel like we've all heard of these two brokerages. On one hand, we have Vanguard, which is known for its wide range of index funds at a really low price. And on the other, we have Fidelity. And they're starting to challenge Vanguard when it comes to low cost index funds. And they also offer a breath of fresh air, especially when it comes to the interface. Now, I've actually been a longtime user of Vanguard for the past seven years or so. And with Fidelity, I've had my account open there for about four months now. Now, in my current experience, there's a lot of things that make both of these brokerages unique. They're very different in some ways, but also very similar in a lot of other ways. Okay guys, so quick spoiler, Fidelity wins in almost every single category we're gonna talk about today, except for one, and that's a pretty big one. So we'll get into that one a little bit later, but first let's start at the top of the list and let's talk about their account fees and minimums. Now with both Fidelity and Vanguard, you'll get access to any of their accounts with a $0 minimum to open with. So the process is gonna be the same for either their brokerage account or their retirement accounts. And the process is pretty standard. You just answer some questions about your investing experience. And then once you have your account, you'll have to just transfer some funds into that account from your bank account. In both cases, this may take a few days since the funds need to actually settle. So it doesn't really matter with Vanguard or Fidelity. It'll just take a few days. Now, with Vanguard, they do have a $20 annual account service fee for all brokerage accounts and IRAs. However, this fee is waived upon statement e-delivery, which I feel that most people will do anyway since it helps out the earth and they're providing a pretty good financial incentive for doing so. So in terms of account fees, these are pretty equal, except that I would still give Fidelity an edge in this category since they don't even have a default $20 annual account fee in case you forget to sign up for their e-delivery. So next, let's talk about the range of offerings that both of these brokerages have to offer. So I'll pull up this really handy chart here from Investopedia that lists the different differences between the two. As you can see from the range of offerings chart, both of these brokerages are full service brokerages, which means that you're going to get access to most of the features that you would find in a long-term investing brokerage. Fidelity does do Forex as well as fractional shares. And I did notice that this chart is not super accurate in one of the manners, which is that Vanguard doesn't offer fractional shares for stocks and ETFs. So even though this chart is saying that Vanguard actually offers fractional shares, I did a lot of research and even tested it myself in my IRA. I'm actually unable to buy fractional fractional shares of stocks and ETFs, but with mutual funds, you're able to buy fractional shares once you reach the minimum on that mutual fund. So in terms of the range of offerings, I think they're both pretty similar, but I still think Fidelity wins this category. And uh, that's just simply because of the fractional shares for stocks and ETFs. Now, number three, the access of funds. Now, this is something I really want to talk about because it's one of the biggest debates out there right now in the investing world. It's the fact that Fidelity has lower fees across the board with their funds, as well as they started to offer what are called zero index funds. Now, in terms of their index funds across the board, we can actually see that based on this table here provided by Fidelity, that the expense ratios, which are the yearly fees of any index funds, are way lower for a lot of these popular funds that they offer. So for example, the Fidelity S&P 500 index fund, FXAIX has an expense ratio of 0.015% compared to 0.04% of the same fund provided by Vanguard. On a $10,000 investment over the course of a year, the Fidelity Fund's gonna cost you about $1.50 versus the Vanguard Fund will probably cost you $4. It's pretty negligible, but some people really wanna find just the lowest fees possible. So if you do want the lowest fees possible, Fidelity also offers what are called zero index funds. These are zero minimum investment, zero expense ratio, AKA just zero fees altogether on their index funds. So a lot of people are gravitating towards these funds because well, first of all, the marketing is really easy for these funds. I mean, zero fees, everybody wants that. The Fidelity Zero Total Market Index Fund, ticker symbol FZROX, is the rival to Vanguard's very popular VTSAX. So let's compare these two total market index funds really quickly, and I'll tell you why actually Vanguard has the advantage here, even though VTSAX costs a fee and the Fidelity one doesn't charge you anything at all. So VTSAX has been around since 1992 and holds about 3,551 stocks versus FZ. ROX has only been around since August of 2018, and I believe it holds around 2,500 stocks. I believe it's 2,491. It's actually interesting to note that the Fidelity FZROX fund actually omits smaller companies, since it actually states on the Fidelity website that it invests in companies with market values greater than $10 billion. 
The 1,000 or so stock advantage that VTSAX has represents a very small portion of VTSAX's total portfolio, but does offer some protection against, you know, the market swings by having more diversity. Now, here's the thing though, FCROX, which is the free one from Fidelity, isn't as tax efficient as VTSAX, and that has to do with what's called capital gains distributions. Now, in the past, FCROX has actually had a lot of capital gains distributions, especially in the year 2018 and 2019, versus VTSAX has not. So since FZROX actually had capital gains distributions, they're not gonna be as tax efficient as some of the other funds that don't. These distributions are generated when the fund sells stocks at a gain within the portfolio, and then those gains are actually passed on to the shareholders of the fund each year, which will actually wind up on your IRS Form 1040. Now, FCROX being such a new fund is probably why investors have had to pay capital gains tax because managers have sold investments with gains that can't be offset with losses. Versus the management in VTSAX is tried and true because it's been around for a while. Vanguard's also been able to patent a certain type of method to sidestep this additional tax burden for their shareholders that they invented within this fund. So VTSAX seems to have an advantage over FZROX in a taxable account, and that difference could really play out significantly over the long term. Now, if you are investing in a tax advantaged account like the 401k, the IRA, the SEP IRA, the Roth IRA, et cetera, then tax efficiency doesn't really matter. The last point I wanna bring up is that Vanguard funds typically have a $3,000 minimum to actually invest in versus the Fidelity fund has zero minimum. Okay, so in terms of access to funds, they're both pretty close, but I do give Vanguard the edge here, especially if you're investing in VTSAX. Number four, let's talk about fractional shares. As I said earlier, so Fidelity offers fractional shares while Vanguard only offers them on mutual funds once you meet the minimum threshold on that fund. So for stocks and ETFs, you'll want Fidelity for the fractional shares option. Now you're probably wondering, why do I even need fractional shares in the first place? And that's a fair question. Now, fractional shares didn't really exist some 20 years ago because they weren't really sought out, but most recently startup investing brokerages like Robinhood started to offer this type of service. Fractional shares allow early investors to get more access to great investment choices. Now, for example, if you wanted to buy a share of Google, well, that would cost you $2,500. And if you don't have $2,500, then you just can't get any exposure to Google at all. Now with fractional shares, you can buy just a dollar amount of that share. So if you had just $250, you could get one tenth of a share of Google and that allows you to buy stocks that are normally outside of your price range. The other advantage of fractional shares is that it offers you a really easy way to diversify. You can get access to 20 to 30 different positions, even with a small amount of money. So in terms of fractional shares, Fidelity wins this one again, and it's quite easy to place a fractional share order in terms of dollars on their platform. Number five, research and data. So both Fidelity and Vanguard offer access to different types of written research. That's a great resource for any investor looking for information on any financial related topic. Now, in my experience, I did find that Fidelity's research was a little bit more robust. It was also free as well, and it covered more stocks, earnings calls, and different types of equity research. Vanguard offered more general investing research and articles on the global economy and macro trends. In both cases, the research was free, but in Fidelity's case, it just seemed more extensive, especially when it came to stocks, and that's probably why I choose Fidelity's research over Vanguard's. Now, number six is customer support. Now, I think it's a tie in the customer support category. Fidelity offers a 24 seven phone support as well as a live chat online versus Vanguard only offers phone support from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern and email support, which actually might take you a few days to get your answer. In my experience, I've called Fidelity a few times when I was getting my account set up earlier this year, and they generally have US-based customer service reps and the hold times were pretty minimal up to around 10 minutes. With Vanguard, when I called them to ask about the fractional shares for this video, actually, I was not put on hold at all, which is a really refreshing sign, and I did find their customer support to be adequate and also US-based. So there's that. If you really care about the 24 seven nature of support, you'll want Fidelity. Otherwise it's pretty equal and Vanguard having no hold times was really nice. Now, number seven is the mobile app. You can do most things with both mobile apps here. I'll actually put on the screen my experience of buying a stock on both of these apps and you'll probably see, hopefully, that Fidelity's is much smoother. It's just a bit easier to use in that regard. Vanguard's just a bit clunkier, not to mention if you've ever tried to buy a Vanguard fund, you have to do it through some crazy convoluted way. Like they basically make you choose the account, then you have to select where it's going to and where it's coming from, which is always really confusing and always takes me a few minutes to figure out how to actually make that function work correctly. It's just not really that intuitive and it feels like that interface is stuck in the stone age. So Fidelity also lets you send money with PayPal, which isn't even an option in Vanguard. 
With Vanguard, since the expectation is that you're going to be investing there for a really long time, it just kind of makes sense that they don't put much of a premium on their mobile app at all. So you generally have to buy a fund in there and then set it and forget it. All right, let's talk about number eight, the interface. The interface of Fidelity is just hands down a lot better. So as I mentioned just a bit earlier, it always takes me a long time to figure out how to actually buy funds on Vanguard. And if that's my experience and I've used seven or eight different brokerages, I can't imagine how hard it is for someone that's new to investing to actually get started with Vanguard. I've always kind of ragged on Vanguard for this, but their interface looks like it's straight from the 80s, even though the internet wasn't invented back then. And it's just so bad that they need a heavy redesign. Problem is, is that I just don't think they care or since it's already working for them, they probably don't feel like they need to fix it. So Fidelity definitely wins the interface battle here. And yeah, I mean, this guy's, this wasn't even close. All right, so I think it's super interesting that we get to compare these two mega brokerages. Now, one of the best things about investing in either of these brokerages is that they've been around for forever and they're both really well capitalized. That means you probably won't run into any issues in terms of stability and keeping your money safe and rightfully yours. Now, if you really care about min maxing your investments, which is a video game term, by the way, and it means to maximize the strengths of your investments, then you may opt for VTSAX with Vanguard and having to deal with their clunky interface. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know which brokerage you actually end up going up with. And as always, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. So that ends the video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.